Il Montenegro è veramente un paradiso fiscale. Io molto spesso comincio i miei video chiaramente con delle domande, in parte anche provocatorie. Come sapete, chiunque mi segua da un po' sa che per me il paradiso fiscale può essere qualsiasi uh, giurisdizione lì fuori. Dipende da come la si utilizza, dipende dalla tipologia reddituale per cui si cerca un'esenzione o uno sgravio. Okay? Quindi tutto può essere paradiso fiscale così come niente può esserlo. Come sappiamo anche l'Italia in realtà per Cristiano Ronaldo è un paradiso fiscale. Quindi... Ma tornando invece al Montenegro, in questo video voglio raccontarvi di un viaggio, il viaggio che ho fatto ormai nella fine dell'ottobre 2021, non mille anni fa, diciamo un mese e mezzo fa, da quando ho avuto finalmente poi la possibilità di registrare questo video, perché il lavoro è tanto e le cose da fare anche, e quindi con un po' di ritardo sono a parlarvi del Montenegro, una giurisdizione secondo me molto molto interessante, un paradiso fiscale per certi versi, meno paradiso fiscale per altri, che però ha tanto da dare, soprattutto è sulla strada giusta, o meglio sta tentando di entrare in quel canale che poi dovrebbe eh, portarlo a esploderlo, noi ce lo auguriamo, sotto il profilo economico, sociale e commerciale, eh, da qui ai prossimi dieci anni. Quindi un paese in via di sviluppo, eh, le infrastrutture non sono particolarmente massicce nel paese, si parla o meglio, sono partiti, stanno per partire i lavori per la costruzione di un'autostrada, di un'arteria che possa collegare i vari punti del paese. Parliamo di una giurisdizione che ha circa 600.000 abitanti, su un'area estesa, se non erro, più o meno tanto quanto la Sicilia. E, ehm, quindi, come dire, è un paese in ritardo, sotto un profilo infrastrutturale, ma con tanta voglia di fare. Il sistema bancario è un sistema comunque abbastanza solido, quindi non ci sono mai stati scandali né problemi di antiriciclaggio eccetera eccetera come invece altre giurisdizioni che noi teniamo a ritenere più solide. Politicamente eh, è un paese che ha avuto le sue problematiche ma che di nuovo appunto grazie alla volontà dei suoi cittadini ne sta uscendo a, a testa alta, c'è tanta voglia di fare, chiaramente non sta, io non sto qui a giudicare il sistema politico, eh, chiaramente do eh, qualche delle impressioni che sono le mie impressioni del sistema economico avuto dal vivo, trascorso circa dieci giorni in Montenegro, ma in realtà sono, ero lì per business e quindi per incorporazioni societarie, per aperture di conti correnti e per strutture di pianificazione fiscale, che è quello che faccio di mestiere. Dunque in questo video andremo a parlare con la mia collega a Podgorica, che è la capitale del Montenegro, oggi è una conversazione interessantissima dove appunto si parlerà di tassazione e di sistema bancario, di quello che possono fare gli italiani, non solo gli imprenditori che arrivano in Montenegro, cittadini europei e non cittadini europei, si parlerà di visti di permanenza e appunto di, di tassazione. Ok, uh, ve lo dico, ma tanto ormai lo sapete, io sono Luca Tagliatera, questo è il canale di Tax Planning Internazionale, ve lo chiedo adesso, cioè prima della sigla, se, uh, di mettermi un like adesso e poi eventualmente di uh, levarmelo alla fine se il contenuto non vi sarà piaciuto. Per chi non l'ha ancora fatto, mi raccomando, iscrivetevi al canale. Noi ci rivediamo nel prossimo video. Sigla! How hard or easy is it to, to get a visa uh, to enter Montenegro and to stay in Montenegro? Well, if you are a EU citizen, you don't actually require a visa to enter Montenegro. You can cross the border only with your ID card. Now, normally, the PCR test is also required. Uh, for EU citizens, normally the tourist visa with the uh, duration of three months is aut automatically given. So you enter the country and you have no problems. Well, theoretically, you, you should be supposed to pay the tourist fee for every day of your stay in uh, Montenegro and leave the country before the three months expire. But even if you don't do that, you don't really have any consequences. They won't be thrown out, so to say. Exactly. They, they won't come for you and, exactly. and get you out, okay. Uh, but like if you want to stay um, and settle down, uh, actually, it's easy to, to get a permanent visa. Uh, to get a permanent visa, no, but uh, you can get a residence permit. So the easiest way to obtain the residence permit in Montenegro is the uh, employment. So you can either start your own company or get hired by an existing company and apply for a residence permit based on employment. I see. Uh, the documents uh, required are a um, criminal record, original, that is not older than uh, six months. 
and uh, well, for most positions, uh, also the diploma, university degree, or high high school degree should be recognized by uh, Montenegrin Ministry of Education. Unless, of course, you're applying for some job that doesn't require any qualifications, such as cleaning staff or a physical worker. I see. The uh, costs are not uh, mm, these costs are not uh, big. I could I can make a table of that for you. So there are some administrative fees to be paid, about uh, uh, seventy euro. You need to do uh, the uh, health check, a medical exam. It costs about uh, twenty five euro, and you need to buy health insurance uh, with a duration of uh, thirty days. Uh, it costs about uh, thirty euro. So the procedure is uh, quite uh, simple. If you already have someone, an existing company, who is willing to give you an offer on employment, you just need their signature and stamp. Mm -hmm. However, if you are starting your own company, well, in that case, you need to provide some liquidity in the exact amount of 3,650 euro to prove that you already possess the uh, means of um, maintenance. A kind of self-sufficiency. Yes. Yes. So you mean you can get employed by yourself, like you can yes. set up a company? Yes, if you're getting company. employed by yourself, then then signature and the stamp are not enough, but you also need uh, uh, liquidity, 3,650 euro, or in other words, uh, 10 euro per day for the next year, for for the duration of the residence permit that you are applying for. And how long does it take generally to process? Um, two uh, days. So it's really yes. quick. Yes. Okay. Nice. And so let's uh, let's take a step back to um, to taxes. So I guess visa is a thing, but getting a tax residency is slightly different from a taxable standpoint. Yes, but it's not uh, too complicated. Um, if you are registered as an employee in uh, Montenegro, it is enough. To be to be registered for more than six months uh, over one year. So if you apply for the residence permit and you get your residence permit before June 30, you uh, sign your employment agreement. You get registered as employee at the uh, tax administration, and you just regularly pay, or not you, maybe your employer if you are employed by someone else. They pay your taxes and contributions for you, and then uh, at the taxes. end, at the end of the year, it is uh, you can easily get the uh, um, residency certificate. Oh, it's a tax certificate. It's a tax certificate. It, uh, there's an administrative fee of five euro to be paid. Uh, for example, if you are Italian citizen, the the certificate will say issued by tax administration of Montenegro based on an uh, interstate agreement between Italy and Montenegro against double taxation. Okay. Hereby we confirm that okay. Mr. Luca is Montenegro has been Montenegrin resident uh, for the fiscal year of uh, 2021 or 22. Okay, so but it says the usual procedure in uh, yes. uh, as per double tax treaty well, yes. released by the, tax, the local tax authorities of yes. course. Make well, sense. most uh, most uh, yeah. most treaties against double taxations are inherited. Do you have in, many? In, yes, we have many, but uh, I mean, people are surprised because Montenegro is such a small country. How have you uh, managed? Yes, you uh, how have you managed to sign all those treaties? The thing is that most of those treaties are inherited from the uh, old uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, yes. So. Okay, so it makes total sense. And you mentioned June 30th uh, before. Yes. Um, that's why you applied 183 days rule for exactly. tax residency. Exactly, yes. yes. So that's the main principle. So to be yes. to be deemed as a tax uh, individual, a tax person mm -hmm. in Montenegro, you should ideally uh, stay along, uh, within the border for more than uh, 183 days. You don't really have to stay because there is no practical check oh. on where you are physically. You just need to you just need to be registered as employee and uh, pay yourself or yes. uh, get paid the uh, minimum salary. Uh, exactly. So the moment you pay taxes, you're deemed to be yes. a, a contribuent, a taxpayer yes. in the debt count. Right? Yes. Makes total sense. Thank you very much for your clarification. So. Um, talking to taxes again, uh, generally speaking, how about taxes? I mean, corporate income tax rate and mm -hmm. personal income tax rate. I know you apply a flat tax here in, uh, yes. in the jurisdiction. 
Can you tell us? Uh, yes, well, uh, corporate income tax is uh, linear. It is 9% uh, fixed uh, independently of uh, your revenues or your profits. So it is very convenient. When it comes to personal income tax, it is also 9%. However, when you pay to an employee uh, salary, there are some uh, additional amounts to be paid, uh, social security contributions, which are quite high. Uh, insurance against employment, uh, health insurance, uh, uh, for pension funds, so those are quite uh, high. Uh, so if you have your own company and you're working for yourself, the best and the most um, economical way of doing business is to give yourself a minimal salary and then take the rest of the money as a profit paying uh, 9%. A dividend, but but like you be you you would be taxed nine percent on the company and then nine percent on the, on the yes. personal income. Sure, nine plus nine yes. in the end of the day. That yes. would be the total tax burden as an individual in uh, Montenegro. Yes. Plus a salary to which you will pay, you you pay some. Percent yes, but uh, for example, if uh. you are if you're not if you're not fiscal resident uh, in uh, Montenegro, you're a fiscal resident in Italy and your company has paid a 9% corporate income tax, then you will not pay 9% on your dividend because, uh, well, because there's a treaty between Montenegro and Italy and we presume you're a fiscal resident in Italy. Absolutely, that's, that, that's clear to me. Yes. Okay. So, it's, uh, so it sounds like interesting. And have you managed to, to get the visa to any US persons, US like, have you ever happened to you to, to, to deal with Americans mm. moving to Montenegro? No, I have uh, UK citizens, I have uh, Ireland, New Zealand, but no US. No. I think that they, uh, is there something like uh, citizenship or visa by investment in Montenegro? Uh, yes, um, well, there is, a, uh, there is a possibility to become a Montenegrin citizen uh, based on uh, investment, but uh, it has a limited uh, duration that is only until, until 31st of December of this year. We are hoping that it will be renewed. Uh, however, until now, uh, it has been functioning in a way that a foreign, a foreign citizen uh, is supposed to invest 250,000 euro in a particular project on the north of Montenegro or 450,000 euro on uh, some particular project on the south of Montenegro. However, it's not uh, up to you where you are going uh, to invest. Uh, for example, you, you can't just buy a real estate in that amount, you have to buy a particular real estate um, that, uh, that is a part of a particular project. I see. And it's not so profitable because, uh, for example, you would uh, be paying 250,000 euro for a sort of a luxurious apartment on the north, uh, which whose worth is not actually 250,000, but more like 120,000. But you can get the passport as an American. You can get can the passport. can be more valuable than the real estate itself. Because, you know, Americans pay taxes based on their citizenship. So they yes, another, uh, but uh, I have I have experience with those projects. I have clients involved in those projects, and uh, I've never heard that an American has done such a thing because yes. most of those clients are like uh, Arabs, and Chinese, and people from countries where it's difficult for them to get uh, to get visa to go to EU or anywhere in the world. So because, because as far as I know, sorry to interrupt you, but as far as you know, as a, an Arab, as a Chinese, getting a, a passport here in mm -hmm. Montenegro uh, could allow them to easier travel across mm -hmm. Europe. Yes. So, okay, so it's a, it's a better. Yes, passport. because Montenegro makes, is a part of the Schengen zone. We're not uh, still a EU member state, but uh, for Montenegro citizens, it is possible to travel across Europe without any visa. So. Nice. It's a it's a it's a, problem. Yes. It's, a it's a plus. And then, uh, what about uh, getting a bank account here in Montenegro as a local company? Mm -hmm. I guess it's the only way, or theoretically there is a chance for a non-resident company to apply for a bank account in Montenegro. 
Well, uh, theoretically, there might be a chance, maybe in one or two bands, but I don't think it would be easy. I mean, like uh, five years ago, it was uh, easier, but now with the new government and everything, the uh, banks have become a bit more, a bit more rigid. So maybe there is one bank where it would be possible, but it would, uh, it would cost also. I mean, now banks. Uh, uh, my experience with many banks uh, after the uh, government change is that they are reluctant uh, to open accounts to, to companies who are owned by foreigners, not to mention non-resident companies. Because like a few years ago, for an Italian citizen who comes here, opens a company, named himself executive director, it was as easy to open a bank account for the company exactly. as for a Montenegrin citizen. I well remember the time. However, for the time being, uh, it is not the case. Uh, for the time being, it is uh, it is a bit more, more difficult. However, I have contacts pretty much in all banks, and I know sense. where I know where it's easier and what can be done where. Well, so. Yeah, but generally speaking, it's like this worldwide. So it's it's, it's called the grid unbanking. It's almost mm -hmm. impossible to get a, a local bank account, even with local company in many jurisdictions in Europe. For mm -hmm. example, in Romania or in Poland or even in Portugal, as a company mm -hmm. yourself or in Malta, not mention Cyprus, mm -hmm. it's really hard to deal with it. Kind of banking account in yeah. this day, so makes totally sense. So yes. many entrepreneurs rely on online banking, such mm -hmm. as Wise or Revolut. Mm -hmm. so it's faster and easier, and you can. Get granted at least an access to a bank service. Otherwise, because uh, <coughs> you know these days it's all about digital economy. Digital, generally speaking, has no substance. Banks, generally speaking, require substance. We have none, uh, mm -hmm. so, so to say. And uh, just one last question about your relationship yeah, as a yeah, country, yeah, as far as you know, with European yeah, Union. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, what do you see in the future of Montenegro? You're entering European Union, or? Well, is something that you wish as a country, as far as you know, or is better to stay out? Well, in my opinion, Montenegro will enter EU at some point. I'm just not sure when, <laughs> how how long it's going to to uh, take. Uh, well, uh, my opinion is that for the country in general, it will be better to join the EU. It will be easier to travel. The uh, employment. Uh, when it comes to a labor market and the market in general, it will be better for the for the economy in general. However, for my personal business, makes sense. Makes totally sense. So I wish you so. So Mania, thank you very much for your time again. It's been a pleasure. Um, uh, I guess uh, it's been a very interesting uh, conversation, and uh, we 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 talk more about Montenegro in the next few days. Thank you guys for listening to us. Bye.